Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on my tutorials on quantum statistics. This is video number 54, and on the subsection of applications of quantum statistics, we're on video number 12. I'm going to discuss the Summerfield expansion. So, I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. Now, I'd like that you look at the previous video to this, which is number 52, where I discussed the Summerfield expansion in order to get the chemical potential for a Fermi gas. And this one, I'm going to call it part three. I'm not really being very consistent in my in my uh, numbering or uh, titles for my videos, but I'm going to calculate the total energy due to, due to electrons inside a solid or inside a Fermi gas. We often model the electrons inside a, inside a solid as being a Fermi gas. Now, to be honest, I, the last video, number 53, was very long because I did everything in detail, but the techniques for this are the exact same. So for that reason, I'm just going to I'm going to fly through it. So what we're trying to do is get an expression for the total energy due, due to electrons in a Fermi gas. So we know at this stage what integral we need to do in order to calculate the uh, the total energy. So you need to multi we need to multiply the energy of, we'll say, a particle or a state times the density of states, and we need to multiply by the occupancy and integrate dE. So for the same reasons the last time I'm going to give we'll look at the density of states and we're going to give that G0 is 3n over twice e Fermi to the 3 over 2. The density of states G of e by the way is with this and a factor of root epsilon. Okay, so just to rewrite that, so G0 is this and I'm going to rewrite the Fermi Dirac distribution as 1 over e to the x plus 1 where I'm after making the substitution that x is equal to epsilon minus mu over kt. Alright, so look, like I said, I've done this all in the past. So I've put all those together, what does the integral look like? Well, the integral looks something like this. You're going to have g0 outside of the infinite integral. We're going to have root epsilon times epsilon d epsilon over e to the x plus 1. Now, once again, look, I'm, I, I do apologize for the fact that I had this x and this epsilon. I'm just, it just looks neater to do it this way. So, this, of course, is an integration by parts. So, we're going to have uv minus the integral of v du. Okay? Now, I'm going to tell you that for the same reason as, as in the last video, the uv term is going to go to zero. I'm not even going to bother doing it. If you want, it's very straightforward. You can do it in three lines and show that, that the uv term is zero. So, now we need to calculate the minus v du term. All right? So I'm going to, the the integrals are the the we'll say the integrals are the exact same. So the answer anyway to that is going to be plus g zero. We're going to get two fifths. One over k t. We're going to get the integral from uh, plus infinity. Now for the same reason as in the last video, I'm going to extend this down to negative infinity because the contribution just gets smaller and smaller. You may as well just make this this proper infinite infinite integral. So we're going to get epsilon to the 5 over 2. We're going to get e to the x. We're going to get a kt times dx. And we need to divide all of this by e to the x plus 1 to be squared. Now, of course, we're talking about Summerfield expansions here. So we need to take the Taylor expansion of epsilon to the 5 over 2 around epsilon is equal to chemical potential. So t of epsilon to the 5 over 2 around epsilon is equal to mu. What is that? Okay, you can do it yourself. Uh, I'm just going to give you the answer. I've shown you in video number 52 how to do it uh, anyway, but it will say this this is the answer. Mu to the 3 over 2 epsilon minus mu plus 15 over 4 mu to the half epsilon minus mu squared over 2. So we're going to plug these three terms now into our integral. And what's that going to give us? It's going to give us three different integrals. This one, this one, and this one. All right. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is convert into the, uh, the convert the integrals into term into x. So I'm going to put in an x term into this Taylor expansion here. So when you do that, you're going to have to trust me if you if you know you can do them if you want. But uh, I usually do these things pretty explicitly. But anyway, if you plug those in, what you're going to get is as follows. The first integral is going to be g0, 2, 2 over 5, mu to the 5 over 2. We're going to get our infinite integral again, 
we're going to get e to the x dx over e to the x plus 1 to be squared. Okay, now uh, the answer to that, just as in the same, I, I did that in the previous video again with slightly different numbers, but the answer is going to be 2 fifths g0 mu to the 5 over 2. Okay, look at the previous video if this is mad. Next, this one here is just going to be a load of constants which I'm not going to bother writing. And we're going to get this infinite integral again of x times e to the x integrated dx over e to the x plus 1 squared. For the same reason as the last time, this is an odd, this is an odd function in x. So if you integrate it across all space, you're going to get 0. And finally, I suppose I may as well do it in black since I've done the rest in black. We're going to have a big load of constants. Again, we're going to have our infinite integral. And the terms here, we're going to have x squared e to the x over e to the x plus 1 to be squared. And put, plugging them all together, once again, you can believe me if you like, is going to be mu to the half g0 pi squared kt to be squared divided by 4. So now we have our three terms after dropping down to 2 for the same reason as did in the last video. Let's plug them all together, do a small bit of algebra, and get the answer. So plugging all those terms together in order to get the total energy, we're going to get the following. That u is equal to 2 fifths g0. We're going to get mu to the 5 over 2. We're going to get plus g0 square root mu pi squared kt 2b squared divided by 4. Now remember of course that g0 is equal to twice n or excuse me, 3 times n, what am I doing? Over twice e fermi to 3 over 2. So what I'm going to do is plug in this, this value for, uh, for g0. You plug it in and you just make it look nice, you're going to get that u is equal to 3 times n over 5. We're going to get mu to the 5 over 2. We're going to get e fermi. to the 3 over 2 this time. Okay, and then we're going to get this extra term here, pi squared over 4, n, kt to be squared, 3 over 2, mu to the half, and finally, e fermi to the half. Now, for the same reason as we did last time, we can see that on the left-hand side, we have, oh, by the way, um, sorry, uh, yeah, with the left-hand side, what we can suggest is, that this that u is equal to this, okay? But we have this extra correction term, we can, which we can assume is quite small. So this is our correction term. So what we do is we assume that inside our correction term, the chemical potential is approximately the same as the as the Fermi energy. And to be honest, I've said in the past in other videos that up until 2000 Kelvin, the the Fermi energy is pretty much the same as the chemical potential. And that's a bit. That's actually quite astonishing, if, if if I'm honest. But that's the way it is. So in most cases, definitely, in, for normal temperatures, you can always solve the chemical potential for the uh, excuse me, the Fermi energy for the chemical potential, and that's what we do. So uh, the next thing we need to do is solve what we had, the value we had for the chemical potential. So in the previous video, I showed you that the chemical potential was E Fermi outside of one minus pi. Uh, pi squared over 12, and we had kt over F e fermi, we'll say, squared like this. Now, if you look here, this term we're going to have a power 5 over 2 onto that. So we're going to apply our Taylor expansion and bring it inside like that. I discussed that in the previous video, and I also proved that particular thing in my videos on the Taylor expansion in my thermodynamics videos. So this is the function that we're going to put in instead of mu. In our, in, our, in our function for energy. Alright, so if you plug that in, once again, just being very careful with your algebra, you're going to get the following. And this is a bit nuts. So, just going to bear with me. So, 3n over 5 e fermi minus 3n times 5 pi squared kt to be squared e fermi to the half 
divided by 5 times 24 times e fermi to the 3 over 2. And we're going to have to add this extra, but smaller term, uh, n kt to be squared, 3 over 2, 1 over e fermi. Now, if you look at this, if you look at this, we're going to have this e fermi, e fermi to the half divided by e fermi to the 3 over 2. So we actually have 1 over e fermi. And we find, if you look at the coefficients and do all the cancellations, you'll actually see that really for these two here, what we have is minus an eighth, and we have plus three eighths, which is equal to one quarter. So really what we have there is one quarter, okay, uh, multiplied by a few corrections, uh, a few other constants. So like, as in this, while it looks, it looks very painful, it's actually quite simple. Putting them all together, we get the following, and this is the end. U is equal to 3n over 5 times e fermi plus pi squared over 4 and kt to be squared 1 over e fermi and we know that we found that in a previous video the chemical potential was the, the, was the fermi energy outside of 1 minus pi squared over 12 kt over e fermi all to be squared like that and those two equations show you how to calculate the chemical potential and the total energy in a Fermi gas, for example in a solid, uh, due to fermions, in this case due to e electrons. So it's the techniques are the thing that are interesting, not necessarily the, the oh, look of course the answer was important in physics at the time, but it's the technique of doing the expansion, making things easier, knowing when you can when you can cancel things and when you can't. So Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might visit universityphysicstutorials.com. Thank you.